Hello, dear listeners. My name is Michael, and I will shortly introduce you to our study of content control mechanisms. Our study is concerned with the question how web publishers can control the conditions under which their content is allowed to be used by others. As you see here on the slide, it was originally motivated by the recent breakthrough of generative AI with all its, all its consequences. One of the consequences was the, was the emergence of a lot of ad hoc standards for the opt-out from the training of such models. Um, these were new means of exercising web content control in response to the changed situation in which a lot of web data was used as training data for uh, the, the development of generative AI applications, which was not going along with the content creators and publishers who wanted to protect their creative work on the internet. Conceptually, there are two ways of exercising web content control. This is first of all, the regulation of web robots by the robots exclusion protocol. And secondly, the annotation of documents with license information. For example, delivered HTML documents may contain machine readable license related semantic markup that indicate the terms and conditions under which the content is allowed to be used by any robotic data consumer. In our study, we parse eight annual crawl dumps from Common Crawl in order to gain a better, uh, better uh, insights in the prevalence of such mechanisms, as well as to better understand uh, yeah, how well they are adopted in the practitioner's community. The crawl dumps which we analyzed were collected between 2016 and 2023 and contain both robots.txt files as well as regular web pages. Some of the key in key findings were that the user agents disallowed in robots.txt files revealed a clear stance against crawlers feeding AI models, for example, the GPT bot, as well as regarding the annotation of license information. We found that these are unfortunately rarely provided. This clearly questions the effectiveness of license aware crawling, and it also indicates that terms and conditions are not that often provided as machine readable annotations, but dominant, predominantly in textual form. Um, 